Hey there, welcome. My name is Dana Damara, and welcome to your AstroCast for the new moon in Taurus. Okay, so first off, I need to say I'm super excited about this new moon. I have personal reasons. My moon is actually Taurus. So uh, I'm excited about all the newness that's coming through uh, with this um, brand new beginning. You know, when the sun and the moon are next to each other, it's a new moon. And uh, we get 13 chances a year, a calendar year, uh, to begin again. And this new moon is uh, beautiful and incredible and soft. And so this reading is for all signs. Uh, it's a general broad stroke overview of the energy of this new moon coming up. What I will say is that there are a few things that, um, you know, there I, I may come out with an aspect or um, some bit of this recording and some of it will resonate with you and you'll, you'll say, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. And then other parts of it, it won't resonate at all. And um, it just means that every single time we have an aspect in the stars, the, the macrocosm, it will affect everybody differently based upon their um, karma, their astrological chart, and their free will. So just keep that in mind as you're listening to this. Uh, only take with you what makes sense and leave the rest. And um, with that, we will begin. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, and if you do want your chart read, because it really does make a difference, please reach out to me. I'll give you the information at the end. Um, okay, so new moon. New moon in Taurus, May 11th. 2021. We have a beautiful numerology quote code of 11, 11, 11, 11, which I love so much. Um, and this new moon is in Taurus. So it happens on May 11th uh, at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right on the money. Uh, and it's beautiful because first of all, it's in Taurus and Taurus is all about home, hearth, health, beauty, family. It's very grounding, uh, sign. So it's a, it's a beautiful energy to begin again before we hit eclipse season, which will be with the full moon in Sagittarius. But I'm not going to go over that in this call. I am going to go over the new moon, but I also want to kind of retro a little bit. Okay. So let me share my screen with you and I'm going to put my glasses on because I can see so much better when I do. All right. So first of all, uh, this is the new moon. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at all those planets. I, I think you can see my little pointer. Look at all those planets in Gemini and Taurus. They are all affecting uh, this new moon. And look at that. All the planets are like whoop, 12 o'clock <laughs> um, in the 10th house. Uh, and then a couple things I want to go over and I'll just point them out to you. One is North Node is affecting this new moon. Here's the sun and the moon at 21 degrees with uh, Uranus at 11. Uh, Chiron is a little player here. Chiron is the healer. And Mars is a little player here. Let me make sure I did it right. Yes, May 11th, 2021. Saturn is a player here, as is Jupiter. Okay. So first things I want to first thing I want to say is that I want to point out, I'm going to use my pointer, Uranus, okay, the planet of the higher mind, planet of change, unexpected events, uh, is in Taurus. And it's in Taurus for quite a while. I don't, I don't want to quote for how long at this exact juncture, but trust me when I say Uranus in Taurus is a really good thing. What Uranus in Taurus does is actually amplify our intuition, okay? So Uranus is the higher mind, Mercury is the lower mind. So Uranus is concerned with our unconscious thoughts, our dreams, um, kind of the things that we uh, think outside of our realm of normal day to day. Okay. And Uranus is in Taurus right now. So it's beautiful because it gives us the opportunity to really dive into uh, deeper questions about how we spend our time, um, what are we giving up to God and to the universe, right? So lots of opportunities to uh, be able to make some shifts here. Um, one thing I want to say is with that energy, we want to be mindful of how we mm, 
kind of vacillate between divine will and free will, right? So um, allowing ourselves to, yes, set intentions and say, this is what I desire and this is what I dream about and this is what I love and this is what I've been, you know, quote unquote manifesting. And at the same time, allowing ourselves the space to pause and then uh, say, well, hold on, there's a bigger player here and that would be divine will and giving it up to the grace of God. So with this new moon, there is a, a balance between the two. And I think I'll, I'll stop share for one second. So in that balance between the two is really where you want to be and where you want to be, the balance between the two is um, presence. Okay, that's um, not presence like P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E it's presence like P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. I think that's how you spell it. Uh, so this divine sense of presence, this idea of being present in the moment, in the now, listening to our intuition, allowing ourselves that space for observation of our thoughts, and then also observation of our motivation behind what it is that we desire. Okay, so I hope you're taking notes because I'm really not sure where this is coming from. <laughs> so I'm gonna share my screen again, and then I'm gonna go over just a couple other little things that are really important to understand. And I'm gonna go a little backwards and a little forwards. Okay, so first of all, um, I talked about this, I think I talked about it in a post a couple weeks ago. It may have been when the full moon, doesn't matter. The thing about May that's really interesting is that there are um, a few planets that are what we call out of bounds. Okay, so we have Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the moon all out of bounds. And what does out of bounds means? And they're out of bounds uh, for almost the entire month of May. So what it means is like if the sun is the ruler of all the planets and, and all the planets have like certain um, essences of kind of what they do and how they support, they're kind of like out of bounds. You know, like I think of it this way, like when I was a kid, I think I'll stop share for just a second. When I was a kid and I was growing up, um, when we had to come home at night, my dad would whistle and we knew it was time to come home. There wasn't like a app on a phone or anything or a timer. It was like, we heard my dad whistle and we knew it was time to get on our bikes and come home. If we uh, couldn't hear him whistle, we were out of bounds. <laughs> and we probably got in trouble when we got home, you know? So the idea of, the, of these planets being out of bounds means that they're, they're kind of acting the way that they wanna act. They're, they're, they have this certain essence, but they might be getting a little unruly or a little amplified in their essence, okay, if that makes sense. And just think about it, if you were, you know, under 12 and you could ride your bike far away, like I could, it's like that, okay? Never, no, not malicious, not getting in trouble, just allowing yourself to um, think outside the box for a little while. And that's the whole month of May. So again, I'll tell you what they are. Mercury, Venus, Mars, the moon. Moon is emotions. Uh, Mercury is communication. And Mercury is gonna go into retrograde here soon. Uh, Venus is love, beauty, abundance, and Mars is the initiator, okay? So just know that as you um, experience things this month with Uranus and Taurus, and then those four planets out of bounds, you may have some like, really interesting things happen and just allow it. It's, wow, that's kind of cool. I wonder what this is. <laughs> I wonder what divine grace is trying to show me right now. Just try to stay in that frame of mind because this whole month is really about magic. I'm going to talk a little bit um, more about a couple other things. So on May 3rd, Mercury went into Gemini. Okay. Now when Mercury is a Gemini in Gemini, um, Mercury is kind of calm in Gemini. Mercury is, um, Mercury can kind of be itself. Mercury is um, sexual, to the point, logical. So 
So our communication, and remember communication can mean multiple things. Um, the way we write, the way we speak, uh, the way we observe and hear and assimilate information um, all comes through in a way that makes sense, so rational, which is fantastic. We're, we'll find it easier to speak our mind, um, say how we feel. Um, you know, sometimes um, things get lost in translation, but when Mercury's in Gemini, it takes a little bit, um, it, it, it doesn't happen as often which is good. So this is like a great month for like negotiations or standing up for yourself, writing something, whatever that is, okay? Um, okay, the next bit is May 8th, which is the day that I'm recording this. Uh, Venus comes into Gemini. And, and this is all important for the new moon. That's why I'm sharing this with you, okay? So Venus is about feelings. Venus is about love. Venus is about abundance. And Gemini is about um, logic and communication. So, you know, now that Venus and Gemini are, I mean, Venus and um, Mercury are in Gemini, we find it easier to express our love or express um, how we feel. And so when that comes up for you, because it will, don't ignore it. Take this time to actually follow, uh, follow that intuitive hit. Okay, and the words that you have to say will be received better because why? Mercury, okay? Okay, here we go. Couple more things actually, I think, yes, two more things. Uh, on May 10th, the day before the new moon, okay, we have Mercury conjunct the North Node. Now, North Node is, think about North Node as karma, as your lessons, as your things that um, are destined in your life. Uh, things that come up for you, right? Um, so when Mercury conjuncts the North Node, you feel this pull toward your, it's going to sound silly, but I'm going to say it anyways, you feel this pull toward your destiny, like chance meetings, chance encounters, synchronicity, dreams, signs, you know, um, whatever um, you've been potentially thinking about or imagining for yourself, you'll start to be pulled in those directions. Don't blow it off, don't ignore it, right? Listen, pay attention because everything is, is leading you in, a, in some way, shape or form, okay? So just know that um, it could come through like an aha moment, it could come through a chance encounter, just pay attention. Trust me on this one, okay? Um, I want to get into the new moon, but I want to say one more thing. I have all these little notes. You guys are going to laugh. If you saw my notes, you'd say, I can't even believe that she reads this. Okay. A couple days after the new moon, and this is important. A couple days after the new moon, we have a Jupiter entering Pisces. Now, why is this important? And I, I have some dates for you. I think I have some dates. Um, because of all the we have eclipse season starting at the end of the month, with all those planets out of bounds, um, we're going to have Mercury in retrograde, Saturn will go into retrograde, and then Jupiter goes into Pisces. Now, this is super cool because Jupiter only changes signs um, once a year, and when it does, it pretty much sets the tone for like a topic we want to focus on, okay? So on May 13th, um, which is kind of cool because it's when it's the very first day of our Joshua Tree Retreat, which I'm so, I didn't plan it. I never plan these things and it just blows my mind when it shows up. This was my aha moment. Of course, I'm starting the Joshua Tree Retreat on May 13th and bam, Jupiter goes into Pisces. This is why it's important. Jupiter is in Pisces. It'll go retrograde in June, okay? So it does go into June. Um, but then it will come back in uh, to Pisces, okay? And it'll be in Pisces through 2022. The great news about this is Jupiter's so happy in Pisces. Um, it, it can exemplify its um, lighter aspects, such as wisdom and spirituality and knowledge and expansion. So, you know, think about, think about it this way. The last two years, Jupiter has been in Capricorn, okay, which is my rising sign. Capricorn is very rule-based, very dogmatic, very earthy, very like, we're going to do it this way and we're going to go slow and steady, right? That's where Jupiter spends. So 
it's good because it, it sets a tone and it allows us to kind of make plans and think about things. Jupiter gets into Pisces, sort of sign of like intuition and psychic abilities. And it's like magic can happen. Okay. So what I want you to think about um, is maybe some of the plans you've set into um, motion and stay with them. Stay that, stay the course, warrior Jedi, <laughs> um, and have a sense of faith and optimism and um, use this sense of expansion, this like deep awareness of the heart to kind of propel you forward. Okay, because you're going to have all the support from Jupiter in Pisces. Okay, so now, new moon, May 11th, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, ready? Uh, this is a really positive new moon for several reasons. One is that May 11th um, is an 11, 11, May 11. It also coincides with three planets at 11 degrees. I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to show my screen. I get so excited about this stuff. I'm such a geek. Um, and I say geek in a really positive way. Like this, if this is what I'm geeky about, I'm pretty proud to be geeky about this. Uranus and Taurus, 11. See that? Chiron in Aries, healing, 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 11. Mars in uh, Cancer, 11 degrees. So you've got three planets in 11 degrees. I feel like I'm, I'm missing one. Let me see. Oh no, that's right. So Mars and Chiron at 11 degrees. And then you've got Mars actually sextiling Uranus, okay? And they're at 11 degrees. And so 11 is a gateway. It's a portal. It's a new beginning. So not only do we have this new moon at, as a new beginning, but we also have 11, 11, 11, 11, four, 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 four portals, of new beginnings, okay? So brand new, exciting opportunities coming through. Be open. Remember I said at the very beginning of this recording to stay present. Presence, presence, presence. Be aware. Be aware of synchronicities. Be aware of your breath. Be aware of your choices. Be aware of the people in your life. Be aware of what is happening because not only that, but this, this, um, uh, there's also a, a couple other um, aspects I want to show you, but this, this, this moon is, well, the only word I can think of is magic, right? Because Taurus in and of itself is, is a sign of abundance and sensuality and grounding and finding pleasure and joy in life. It's about security. It's about aligning your values with your soul's calling and really allowing yourself to kind of get into a groove of how you want to live this life. And, and with that, you know, if, if this were Aries, it would be like a charge forward, right? Taurus knows to allow. So Taurus um, is also exemplifies a bit of surrender into the sweet life. Okay. So, um, this, the energy that we're feeling with this new moon is pointing us in the direction of being in a space of recognizing the magic in life. Um, the new moon is also trying to Pluto. I'll show you where Pluto is. So first of all, you have the sun and the moon at 21 degrees, and then here's Pluto still in Capricorn, Saturn and Jupiter have moved out and like, Freaking Pluto's like, I'm staying right here. Pluto is transformation. So this, this um, new moon is about harmonious transformations. This new moon is about um, topics that align with earth, with our body, our physical body, with our possessions, with our home, our environment, um, food, um, money, land, properties, like anything that's like really grounded. And because Pluto is in Capricorn, it's just a double grounding. Um, it, it just has this feeling of being doubly grounded so that when that transformation, whatever it is, takes place, if you're present to it, there isn't a resistance. So you're like, of course, I'm totally in the flow right now. Um, super, super positive 
powerful, sweet energy. Ride this wave because we're going to start eclipse season and we're going to start with some retrogrades. So ride this wave and be present. I mean, look at all those, look at all of these planets cluster together. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is you've got Chiron and Aries. Chiron and Aries. Chiron is going to be in Aries for like, I think eight years or something crazy. And if you have Chiron in Aries in your birth chart, you're going through what we call a Chiron return. And if you're resisting it, you're having a hard time. Don't resist it. Just kind of laugh about transformative things that are happening. I know they can be uncomfortable. I have Chiron in Aries. I'm like laughing almost every day. Um, but this is a, a beautiful aspect that will allow for um, healing, like flat out healing. Um, uh, I don't want to talk about the eclipse. I wrote a little bit about the eclipse, but I don't want to talk about it. The new moon actually, not yet anyways. The new moon sextiles Neptune. So see, here's Neptune over here. Neptune in Pisces heightens your intuition. It heightens your imagination. It heightens your psychic abilities and your creativity. So with this new moon, if you spend some time um, acknowledging that, you will be guided in an intuitive way that will, again, lead you to this, I said this in the beginning, like you're a, a destined path for you. You won't resist it. And you can ground in it because it's a new moon Taurus and uh, trying to Pluto and Capricorn. But you have to have that sense of faith and optimism, even if you don't necessarily agree with or understand changes that are happening. <laughs> Remember, Uranus, unexpected changes. Um, so greater empathy and receptivity and allowing yourself to remember that you are this microcosm of the macrocosm will point you in the direction of, um, well, a more aligned existence. And, and if it's one thing we all learned in 2020, surrender and surrender again. So if you're still not recognizing that, you're going to get another chance. <laughs> uh, the other thing uh, that we have happening is Mercury. Where's my little Mercury? There it is. Mercury right here. See it? It's trining Saturn Whoo, right there. Okay. Uh, pretty much exact within one degree. So remember Mercury's lower mind communication, you know, day to day. Saturn is uh, restrictions, systems, you know, structures. So if you have been working on a project and you've been persistent and persevered through some bumpy terrain, keep going because with Mercury trying Saturn with this new moon, it's like, it's almost like you're zipping up whatever project uh, you were working on or whatever negotiation or whatever it was, contract, whatever is, it, it will set you up for your long-term plan with what? Faith and optimism. Why? Four planets out of bounds. <laughs> oh, God, I just love this stuff. Um, new friendships might come in, new people, new opportunities. Don't dismiss them. Do not dismiss them, but don't get distracted. Stay, stay, finish up, tie up the loose ends, dot your I's, cross your T's. Then you can ha soar. Um, and then the last little bit is Mars sextile uh, Uranus, which is right here. I mentioned it before. Here's Mars. Here's Uranus. So it's, it's a perfect transit for making some changes in your life because Mars is the initiator and Uranus is the higher mind. So when they couple together, they're kind of like they can do things smoothly without a lot of um, fuss or mess because they work together. And, and just remember that, you know, with, with Chiron and Aries and all this focus on healing, you know, some of the stuff that you're moving toward or away from or setting a new attunement with or projects, whatever it is, relationships, this is really the, 
divine force that's living within you, your little soul speak that's like, let's go this way. Um, grace, um, I'm gonna stop share. Um, grace, guidance, um, whatever you wanna call it, I, I call it divine guidance. Um, this new moon, if you can tap in, if you can just pause for a little while during this new moon and really ask yourself, um, you know, where can I surrender? What do I really desire? What can I just finish up? What makes my heart sing? And just be open to presence, serving it to you. And then when you get served it, receive it. Don't push it away and go, I can't believe this is happening. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Believe it, it's happening. You called it in, right? Sometimes I work with a lot of clients and I'll say, I can't believe this is happening. And I'm like, why? You've been, look at all the things you did to get here. <laughs> but sometimes we don't either believe that we deserve it or we don't believe that we have that power within us. I'm telling you, you do. So trust, know that there's so many beautiful aspects happening right now and um, the universe is trying to deliver to you. So don't turn away from it. Okay. Um, so again, new moon, May 11th, 12 noon. So lovely. Jupiter and Pisces, May 13th. Ah, so lovely. We have a full moon in a couple of weeks. I will have another recording for you before then, but just kind of get your affairs in order because it's going to get a little bumpy with the full moon, Sagittarius and eclipse and, and another eclipse. And it just is what it is. This is what happens every year, but we only have four eclipses this year. Last year, I think they had like six or seven. So we're, we're good. We're back on track. Um, if by chance you want an astrological reading, please let me know. I love reading people's charts. It provides so much insight as to kind of where you are on the spectrum and how things could potentially affect you. But remember, you have your dharma, you have your karma, and then you have your free will. So you always get to make the choice. Um, I like to try to make try to make my choices with divine guidance. Sometimes I go a little out of bounds and then I am like, wait a minute, wait a minute, where was I going again? <laughs> so, uh, but you, knowing your chart really helps a lot. So if you want me to read your chart for you, let me know. Uh, at this moment in time, when I'm recording this, I have two spots left to the Joshua Tree Retreat. So if you wanna come, you better get on it. I have a feeling they're gonna sell out by Monday. Um, if you're watching this on Sunday, happy Mother's Day. I'm gonna make sure I send this out early in the morning. Um, even if you are not a mother, you have a mother or had a mother. And I just wanna honor all the mothers in the world. Uh, your work is um, very much appreciated and um, I'm sending you so much love. Um, reach out if you need any support, danadamara.com. In the meantime, have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Namaste. Take care, you guys.